Okay, we've got Chris from Abroad in Japan and Sea Dog VA, and they're talking about how bad Mr. Beast actually is. Let's check it out. Did you, did you, I, I want to see if you saw, did you see the Mr. Beast thing where he rented out the theater to yes. eat his Lunchables and watch the Talk what Tour a, podcast? What a fucking idiot. Do you know Talk Tour? <laughs> you know talk Tour talk girl? To, yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw the little short about that or whatever it was, TikTok or whatever for Mr. Beast. Yeah, renting out a theater to watch Talk Tour with all of these other creators. Yeah, it was pretty cringe. It was pretty cringe. I don't know what he expected or what the team expected from the reception on that, but uh, I think it was pretty universally received as cringe. Just very, very odd, very out of place, like lack of awareness, very cringe. Give me that hop too. <laughs> what did you think about Mr. Beast's generational fall? What, what do you think first, Because <laughs> I, I mean, anyone that thinks Mr. Beast is about anything other than making mm. himself the richest YouTuber in the world <laughs> has missed something. You know, he has fallen off a little bit, I would say. I would definitely say so. When those Dog Pack 404 videos started coming out, his videos definitely dropped off in viewership. Definitely. I wouldn't say... I don't know. I don't know how massively it dropped off, but I definitely noticed a trend of a bit of a drop off. Yeah. So maybe like instead of, you know, 100 or 150 million views overnight, they were getting like 50 million views overnight. So it was definitely a massive drop off, but still he's making millions of dollars off of these videos. Let's not kid ourselves. I've met his manager, Reed, uh, two years ago at a, no, a video he call. Now, he which, yeah, he's now, left yeah. him at a, uh, his manager, Reed, a year or two ago. Yeah. He's nice enough, but they're very much like, how can you make us more money? And I was like, <laughs> I mean, I like to make videos that are fun and educational. I'm like, yeah, but money, 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 money. That's all we care about. And that. It is kind of difficult to see YouTubers who are very successful talk about money. I mean, these guys are like at the top of their game in their respective areas, right? Like Abroad in Japan, Chris from Abroad in Japan. Nobody else does it better in terms of the Japan like cinematic vlogs. Like he does it so good. And informational and kind of like news journalism give you the inside info on Japan. Nobody really does it better. I mean, he's the, he's the biggest name that I know in that scene. And then Sea Dog VA, right? The the probably the biggest Western streamer in Japan. I w in my opinion. I mean, I don't, I don't see anyone else bigger doing it over there like he's doing it. So these guys are making tons of money themselves. It is hard to hear them talk about like, oh, Mr. Beast after all the money. But I do understand what they're saying to a certain degree, it from a certain perspective, right? There's an authenticity aspect and. There's ways to argue about this, you know, maybe it's not maybe it's not healthy to seek authenticity from creators, right? Because as a viewer, if you're seeking authenticity, that means you're kind of seeking some sort of real connection with somebody through a, a screen, and that's unhealthy at its most base level. But seeking authenticity, seeking something a bit more real, I mean, whether it's healthy or not, I think it's something that we naturally do, and Mr. Beast is definitely not providing that. So I kind of understand what they're saying from that perspective. Day after the the call with um with Reed, I was going to uh, I was going surfing with Felix. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm actually going to see Felix in a minute. And they were like, you know, we want to have Mr. Beast, uh, Jimmy, come over, and we're going to have this like this. We want to do like a handoff. We're like, you know, from one YouTuber to the next, mm -hmm. to the top of their game. And I was like, this just sounds the most pretentious fucking <laughs> shit I've ever heard. Oh, I. I do agree with that, absolutely. It sounds like they're trying to do some sort of passing of the torch thing. Like, why? Why do you have to do this in a video? Why does it have to be a, some big deal symbolic thing? Like, oh, Mr. Beast, he's the one now. He's the chosen. I must pass off the torch. He is the one that will make it to greater heights than I could have ever dreamed for PewDiePie, you know? It seems very cringe, very, very out of touch. Yeah, I don't like that at all. It's pretentious as well, I agree. Oh yeah, great. And like, of course Felix wants that. Come on over <laughs> and just, you know, hand some sort of weird trophy or something. Yeah. It was just very lame. I remember talking to Felix. I was like, this is just so lame now. Uh, I mean, is this all YouTube is now? Yeah, is it all just money? Yeah, yeah. Is well, that... mostly. Yeah, mostly. And, now, and then he teamed up He teamed up with Logan Paul, and that tells you we need to know. <laughs> Literally, he teamed up yeah. with Logan Paul, the biggest, can I say the C word? Yeah. Like, biggest fucking cunt <laughs> there is, right? I mean, everybody oh, seems yeah. to have forgotten what a massive cunt Logan Paul is. Well, I don't... Uh, nope, nobody forgot, I don't think. Nope, everybody is quite aware. Maybe not his fan base, or maybe they just choose to blissfully ignore it, just be blissfully ignorant, something like that. Oh, that didn't happen, or oh, I don't believe it, something. 
But everybody else is very, very aware. Yeah, Logan Paul is... He's kind of, uh, yeah, he's kind of been the scum of YouTube for a while, and he somehow, somehow continues to make recoveries and bound back and make tons of money. It's, it's, it's quite crazy if you think about it. I mean, no, right? it's, it's back. If he's it's not back, filming somebody who's recently taken their own life, literally hacking from a tree yeah. in the forest yeah. and making it about themselves, somebody who has exploited their views through cryptocurrency scams, and like, you know. You yes, all of that happened, by the way. Yeah. All of that happened. I don't know if that video was taken down or not. I'm not sure. But yeah, he actually recorded a video and thought it was good enough to just blur it out. But he was still recording a, I don't know if I can even, an unalive person, right? He was still recording somebody hanging from a tree. And yeah, that's just insane, right? To, to think, oh, I can blur it out and that's good enough. And oh, I'm still covered. Ooh, look at me. I'm edgy and I'm doing something crazy. Oh, man, yeah. He actually thought that was a good idea. Shouldn't be partnering with these sort of people. Um, yeah, it is an odd choice. But I he does bet... seem to, like, love Logan a lot. And it, it, Business-wise... But you and I know behind the scenes, yeah. you know, you've heard bad things about Mr. Beast for years. Yeah, you hear rumors. I've, I've heard a lot of rumors. Yeah, right? Like, not... Yeah, yeah, there's been rumors kicking around for a while about Mr. Beast, and nothing really, I don't know, nothing really gained a big amount of traction until these Dog Pack 404 st videos started coming out and until the Ava Chris Tyson stuff started coming out. That really kicked it off, I think, and got the ball rolling. And now there's just a big mess of drama surrounding him. Man, the, uh, what's her name? Uh, Rosanna Pancino. She is on Mr. Beast's case, man. She is covering everything that comes out about him. She's got, she's got it out for him big time. Yeah, there's, there's definitely creators that are just covering everything about him. I've covered a lot myself. Yeah, there's a lot of drama around Mr. Beast right now. Nothing that's like substantial, it's just no. more like... And I don't think he's like, a, he's pure evil or anything like that. Right. I just think people need to look past the philanthropy, which is solely designed for his own benefit. It's, it's yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he is the quintessential YouTuber in the fact that like YouTube mindset is all he has. All he thinks about is the next big goal, the next big milestone. How do I get my videos to have more and more views? How do I increase my public image to improve my view count because everything is correlated right because he is the brand he is the the image right of of the mr beast channel so how do i how do i improve this to improve this to ultimately improve video count and subscriber count and that's that's all he cares about literally it's a kind of what it's kind of like it's an incredible defensive system where yeah. you know if you donate money and do some great things and he has done great things we can't yeah. deny that if you can use that really as a sort of deterrent for any criticism and yeah. you're doing it for the wrong reason the right right as a protection method as like a shield on your backside like hey i'm doing all this stuff but hey i have a philanthropy channel i do good stuff all the time what are you guys talking about i'm a good person like yeah it doesn't ha it doesn't carry the same weight if you're using it in such a way you only have a philanthropy channel to you know protect yourself to have a shield against all the negative criticism i don't know about that yeah it doesn't have the same it doesn't have the same effect Philanthropy is, it always feels like it's there as a barrier to stop any yep. criticism. Yep. And now that has stopped working because people have seen past that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to say because like philanthropy is always a tough one because obviously you, at the end of the day, it's still good even if of course he's using it as a shield. You're like, yeah. all right, well, he's still doing it, you know? Uh, that's true. I mean, that's a fair point too, right? Good things are still being done, but it's just the effect of it, right? You can, you can be happy that the good thing is being done, but re also recognize, hey, he is using this as a shield to protect himself. Like, he's still doing bad stuff on the side, right? So it, it doesn't excuse that at all. It just means, okay, sure, good things are being done, but he's still, you know, got this negative side to him. Um, but it, it feels like it is being used as a tool in some senses, but it's so hard to distinguish when it isn't, it isn't, right? Because, like, even if it is, it's like, well, it's still a good thing. Right. It's hard to use that as a point, like, against him, but... But, I don't know, it, like, Jack Septic Eye, when he did the, the comment years ago, it was about a year ago now, wasn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah. A completely unrelated question. <laughs> Do you like Mr. Beast? No. Do you think Mr. Beast ruined YouTube? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because it became more about views, money, and popularity than it did about having fun. I, yeah, it's possible. I don't know this for sure, but it's possible. Because I, you know, who knows what the YouTube execs talk about behind the scenes and how everything went down. But it is possible, and I think it actually quite, kind of likely that YouTube has changed how they do ads and changed their metrics and changed their goals for videos 
based on how well they see Mr. Beast doing. So they're basically like setting the goal, setting the bar a lot higher based on what you, Mr. Beast has been able to do with his channel, saying, hey, if Mr. Beast can do it, why can't these other channels do it to get more ad revenue, to get more watch time, to get whatever, whatever, right? So they're pushing these things possibly, potentially, and I think quite likely because of Mr. Beast. You know, and he was like, I hate how YouTube's about this and that. And then yeah. Mr. Beast went off on one and they had to sort of apologize. But deep down, you know, Jack, that's what he really thinks. And in wow. recently, with recent events. Uh, he, he was, he's so mature and so chill. Mm. Uh, he was just like, I just don't want to deal with this. This is not what I wanted it to be. And you can but tell. I, you know, it's aged well. The clip's aged. I think, I think it was just a moment of just like, hey, you know, whatever. It's, yeah, this is how I feel. Why not? Like, if Jack Jacksepticeye wanted to say that he doesn't like Mr. Beast or whatever, why not? I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it was, it seemed very casual and like kind of innocent like ah, he's not the greatest you know that kind of thing like it didn't seem like he was like oh he's a horrible person and i'm out to get him like it, it didn't seem like that kind of uh emotion put into it but again what do i know i'm just reading into a little clip that i saw <laughs> very well, you know. but anyway um yeah and there's there's other things i could talk about about this things yeah. i've seen heard read behind the scenes yeah I, I, that's my I, thoughts on it i've been waiting to say things a long time about that a good rule of thumb is that if you see a creator who seems like they have a lot of friends they hang out with a lot of people they're normally a bit more well adjusted i think but there's a, a certain group of people or creators that you maybe I mean, interact with and you're like ah makes a lot of uh, sense now why people didn't really hang out with the them much <laughs> that's a good point that's actually a really good point yeah if you see someone with a stable group people that like love them or you know are entertained by them want to be around them enjoy their company and they're always there for them that says a lot about that creator right they're stable they've they've got something going they've got their head on straight or they know how to maintain relationships or you know whatever the case may be even if they're just pu more purely professional but those people stick with them so they know how to maintain professional relationships right so it still says a lot more about that person than the other guy who like oh you know he's got a rotating friend group there's there's a lot of how would you say it there's a lot of turnover in his friend group right or on screen you know the the talent is changing all the time stuff like that and mr beast has had that happen he has had that happen quite a bit so you know read into it what you will but that, i think that says something definitely annoyed me but so remember uh, the yeah. kids blindness thing oh yes yeah. yes that's right, right? Yeah. he cured blindness i know i'm laughing at that it's just the thumbnail the thumbnail is so demonic here's the I dilemma like it. yeah those thumbnails are kind of creepy to be honest yeah something about the uh the saturation and contrast that they put into it it's just they stand out in such a weird way and they're shadowed so weird it does look a little bit creepy it's one of those things on the one hand brilliant he yeah you know help kids deal with blindness yeah, which is really yeah. great but i kind of you can you can picture the meeting having met his manager and talked to people behind it, yeah. you can picture that meeting how it went in a room oh, yeah. in north carolina we need to make more money the team's got bigger, we need to increase our revenue by like 10%. Who's got some fucking awesome ideas out here? <laughs> and they went, oh, what if we do bomb a, bomb a truck and throw a train <laughs> off a cliff? We'll do it. Uh, and they did. They did do that. Yeah, they did do that. The others, oh, <laughs> cure blindness, we could like cure 100 kids blindness. Yeah. Fucking, that's the one. That's going to get the headlines. Yeah. And that is how it's, it's not like he read an article and went, man, this issue is really bad. If we mm -hmm. could make a documentary. Mm -hmm covering this topic about blindness that could be cured. Yeah. That's the way to tackle it. Yeah. It's true though. I mean, it's absolutely true. It's it's all very corpo. They're sitting in a room together like with their glasses resting on their nose and a like a clipboard or I guess it's probably more like an iPad these days. Nobody's really writing by hand, are they? But yeah, like an iPad in their hand and they're like, "Hey, okay everybody, we need the best ideas possible to raise revenue 10%." Yeah, it's it's absolutely. I think he's right about this 100%. And it's purely just from coming from a perspective of how do we make the brand look as good as possible to increase view count, to increase money, to increase, you know, to get that 10%. It really is. I mean, I think that's definitely true. He can make a really well-made documentary. He could cure blindness in 100 kids and still have the click-through rate that yeah. he demands and actually cover the subject in a serious matter. And yet, that's true. it was not that. It was cure the blindness, done, yeah. Got my money, here's the sponsor. Well, hey, done. I, it, money. Noble acts, no doubt about it. You can tell he doesn't really care. It's just, you turn up, <laughs> big quick video, back on a private jet to North Carolina. And you would think that that would actually increase revenue more to have more of like a documentary style video, a longer video that's going to have way more ads put into it, like 40 minutes or an hour video, right? So that there's, there's backstory built up, individual, you know, 
per- person's stories built up that are, you know, being affected and positively by this, you know, whatever, maybe the curing blindness or something, it could be done in a much more, I don't know, much more sentimental or authentic way, right? So you actually get a feel for the people that are getting positively affected by this. It definitely could be done differently in a way that I think people would find more interesting or more real, you know? Just well, I think the it's, reason it's why just... I don't like a lot of those is that it does feel like creatively like void as well. Like there's nothing like there's no story being pursued. There's here. no story. There's just money, give, problem I... fixed, goodbye. And you just see things happen. That's a fair point. That's absolutely a fair point. Yeah, a lot of the videos are just like bam, 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 action, uh, like really fast paced exposition, like set up everything, go, go, done. They win or they don't, or they here's money and that's it. Video over. Like what just happened it was just a blur like you know you don't even know what you did with your time you you try to remember like okay uh the guy won and i guess that was it you know it's just it's very empty it feels very void of anything like human anything real you know it's it's strange but events that are impressive like i bought a million dollar yacht and i sat around yeah. and i rented a million dollar yacht or whatever but you just feel nothing there's yeah. no emotion no story no plot behind it it's just things happening and this is what i just hate it i hate the uh, what youtube has become well, and, I, 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 but i, I realize yeah. the audience the kids mostly under 14 naive don't understand what's going on but i think it's they'll be true. i think it's true i think it is a younger audience that really has an appreciation for all this stuff that that fast paced like boom 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 reward re re reward reward like action all the time keep your attention adhd focus you know what i mean it is it is definitely appealing to a younger audience in that way lunchly and they'll be drinking prime yeah. and the next generation is for lack of a better word fucked yeah, i mean there's some there's some videos where i feel like he's done a decent job of like telling the story but there's other times where i'm like man i feel like the need to have the video be about what you're doing and yourself is sometimes the thing that holds back the video mm. and it makes it kind of boring. I feel like there's so many interesting stories that other people have that you could show off uh, if you gave them the time. But That's true, exactly. Like we were talking about with the documentary style videos on the Beast Philanthropy channel, he could definitely let people tell more stories about themselves. It, you know, it doesn't have to be about him doing something, right? Yeah, I agree with that 100%. On the, I used to sort of respect him for the sense of the, the hard work and the grinding aspect of it. Yeah. And I respect any creator who's who's done well on YouTube because often there's a lot of mm. time, effort, thought uh, has gone into that. That's yeah, he's put in the time. He has definitely hit the grind, like hard. Really, really hard. You don't get to where he's at without grinding, grinding, grinding every single day. And I mean, he he talks about it openly on like podcasts and stuff, right? Like you just you just keep making videos over and over and over. Keep iterating, study everything. Look at the analytics. Look at every aspect of video creation, and the YouTube algorithm and everything, and just figure it out. Just figure it out in in whatever niche that you choose. He has done that, and he's been very successful. But it's turned in a weird way in recent time. I don't know how long. I would say maybe a year, two, or three. It's just turned into this like soulless mess of just instant reward, constant gratification through the whole video uh, to keep those like 12 year olds attention, I guess. Somewhere along this, the timeline, last year or two, hmm. the scales have tipped and it's all become a bit ugly. It's, yeah. it's also yeah. boring, which I and feel it's like, like is, is I, the saddest part of this. Yeah, I, like, I, watched <laughs> him, I watched him so boring. drive a train off a cliff into That's a pit, the worst one. and he That's bombed terrible. it, and he blew up a tank, and yeah. you're sitting there like, oh, I don't care, man. Because at the <laughs> core of a... F yeah, because the whole appeal of the video, and you, and you can tell this, right? The whole appeal of the video is just like, boom, big crazy thing happened. Okay, good. That's it. That's it video is a story and yeah. people and a plot yeah. and narrative and him it's just no. there's the humor and the nuff it's just boring that's yep. the future of the internet so get ready fasten your seat belts it's about to get a lot shitter you know uh, i would uh, i wouldn't have uh, exploded about this but the day i saw beast team up with logan paul oh who of yeah. course you know i was in what japan do mean, that... what do you mean you don't want electrolytes in your kids food <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, just, I was you know are you here... getting enough electrolytes <laughs> I, i'm <laughs> concerned about are you getting enough you weren't here the, the, the time he did the everything wrong in japan thing right i laughed i was like of course he did the go-karts the go-karts that nobody uh, likes i've i've actually seen this before i've seen it might have even been uh, abroad in japan covering this but all the things like not to do in japan and the go-karts is one of them because they're actually really loud and annoying and 
Japan is a very like a very polite, very respectful society and like culture. And so, yeah, anything like this where you're like drawing attention to yourself and really trying to stand out is just like, oh, it's like cringe to them. It's really, really annoying. Yeah. So this, yeah, this is bad. The go karts in oh Tokyo my God. because you see them. They go, rum, 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 rum. everyone's yeah. having a lovely day in Shibuya. Oh, the hot. sun's shining, the birds are singing. <laughs> Hop, skip, and a jump. And then, like, rum, 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 yeah. Rum, they're everywhere. And, like, they're eight everywhere. dozen fucking go karts come past. And, of course, Mr. Beast wasn't the first person no, to no. do the go karts, but he popularized it. And now they're. Yeah, I mean, he has a huge platform. So, him doing it, anybody who goes to Japan who saw his videos doing it is going to be like, oh, I got to try the go karts. I got to, you know, anybody who's a fan who wants to try what Mr. Beast did is like, yeah, okay. And it is going to popularize it more and more for the tourists i would i would agree with that they're unstoppable and it's everyone so, in tokyo hates it it's so annoying because it's like there's so much cooler shit you could have done yeah and you picked the one thing that was lame it's not yeah. just annoying though it's literally yeah. very dangerous like it's not gonna end well and it doesn't end well crashing into taxi drivers crashing into my favorite fish and chip mm. shop in Rapongi. oh yeah they did do that they did crash into the fish and chip shop. oh okay so not mr beast but someone else a foreigner crashed into a fish and chip shop <laughs> that's crazy Oh man, you should not let these people have regular licenses then. If they can't drive a go-kart, go-kart driving is simple. It is so simple. Like, man, and they don't even go that fast. Like, you can't drive that? Don't let them drive a car. Don't. Cubs. Forgot about that. Fuck. Um, but yeah, hopefully there's no blowback from saying things. Oh no, I don't think so. And it, if, if... I mean, it, this is at a point where everyone has talked about it, so... It's not like Connor and I ran too bad. I'm yeah, okay yeah. with burning my, my lunchly sponsor opportunity. Well, you won't be in a Mr. Beast video now, will you? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're passing up Mr. Beast opportunities here, everybody, and that is okay. Yeah, it's not the most important thing. Sometimes it's just more fun to make a video that you actually want to make, and uh, that's it, you know? Just have fun doing it. <laughs> I won't get that's your biggest dream. <laughs> you know, my favorite, my favorite thing about Mr. Beast is how, in every interview, he's like, we literally put all our money back into investing in content. Mm. He makes that like he's a genius businessman. Yeah. Everybody does that. Everybody <laughs> invests their revenue back into <laughs> Right, right. If you want your videos to be better, if you want to have higher production value or, you know, more talent in your videos or something like that, you have to. You have to be willing to put money back into it. You can't just grow, grow, grow revenue only unless you're like an Asmund Gold or something like that who I mean, he just stays in his room and only streams and doesn't do anything really. So he doesn't need to reinvest much. I mean, he buys other companies and or you know, invests in other companies, I guess. But in terms of his own stream, he's not really investing much money into his own stream, his own uh, YouTube videos that he makes from his stream. So yeah, unless you're like a very edge case like that, you are going to be reinvesting your money definitely. Producing <laughs> thing. That's, That's not like he's not a normal <laughs> businessman. Like. Oh, it's just, let's, I've got an idea. Let's put our revenue and profit name into it. Does Everyone do does it. Everyone. Actually, Nintendo doesn't. Nintendo doesn't. Yeah, Nintendo yeah. doesn't. Nintendo's TV's the most cash-rich company TV's in Japan. TV's taking down YouTubers <laughs> for using their music. Well, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just glad we have, like, a comic book villain to all rally behind that we all really dislike on YouTube. It's good to have and someone... he's partnered with the biggest YouTuber on the platform. It is... Yeah, and so it kind of makes them look like the uh, the evil duo because, you know, Logan Paul is known for all this stuff. I mean, he's clearly known for it. And then teaming up with Mr. Beast, it's like, okay, Mr. Beast, are you, is this self-reporting? Are you outing yourself? Like, you, you are teaming up with the villain, right? So what are you doing? Are you just saying publicly that you are the villain too now? Like, you know, it's just very strange. It's an odd choice that he seemed to oh, yeah. go with it. But I think I, his PR team would have been like, yeah, hey, don't do this. Jimmy, bro, don't maybe we this. shouldn't, like, given all the terrible <laughs> things that have been happening these last six months, yeah. maybe we shouldn't partner with the guy who marks the dead. No, I'll just yeah. make a lunchbox with him. I'll make a lunchbox this piece of shit drink that's so bad senators of the US have sort of wondered about banning it fucking yeah, it's not caffeinated ideal. prime it's shit not ideal. Oh. yeah it is it is garbage stuff I mean I've seen some stuff there's like lead in their food and stuff like what is this that is so bad oh anyway I'm off to watch the talk to podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there were some good points thrown out there, right? Uh, C Dog VA and Chris Abroad, those guys are they're great. They're funny, man. If you guys have not watched any of their videos, watch Abroad in Japan, watch C Dog VA's videos. They're great content creators, really. 
I, yeah, I think there were some really good points thrown out there. You know, it's definitely true. If you're doing philanthropy, but you're also doing all the sketchy stuff on the side, then it doesn't have that same authenticity. It doesn't have that same, like, effect, right? It just means, okay, you are doing some good things with your money, but it clearly looks like you're doing it as a shield because you're doing the sketchy stuff that everybody knows about. Like, it's, it doesn't have the same, like, level of effect to it, right? So, I don't know. Really good points thrown out there in that video. I appreciated that video a lot. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.